Well, here's another scary sight, a uh, Norco 1200 that caught fire. This happened here at our, the campground we're, we're staying at. This is a, a friend of ours, not our RV, but just, and he wasn't home at the time, and not, or wasn't in the RV when it caught fire. But luckily his neighbor uh, saw the fire, some kids did, they started yelling, and they came over with a fire extinguisher and got it put out in time. But you can see here it's a Norco 1200, there's a seal number made in, looks like 2012. I don't know the cause yet. I think he's been talking to Norco. They're going to try to come out. You can see what le what's left of the cooling fans. So I do not know if, the, if a pipe busted and caused it. They said, the people who witnessed the fire, they said the, the bulk of the fire was up top uh, when they saw it burning, that there was no fire below, that everything was dripping down on it. But uh, that's some scary stuff. Um, in fact, after this happened, I've been doing a little research about these. There's these plastic tubes that you can, um, I'll, I'll look them up here on the computer here in a second, that you can install. And so if there's a fire, it'll melt, and then it, it has a fire extinguishing material in it. It'll put the fire out. So if we might have had a, a 1200 series, that would probably be a good investment. I'm going to show you the other side of the RV. Well, let me show you the front of, the, the front of this thing, too. Pretty common refrigerator. You see these are a lot of RVs. Very nice motorhome you can see. Let me, let me go show you the, the, the burn, what happened on the other side. And here's the other side, and he's since installed a um, residential refrigerator. It melted the top panel, damaged the paint a little bit, uh, but he really got lucky. Could have really been bad. Could have destroyed this beautiful RV motorhome. Let me go show you what uh, what I found online that I think would be a good safety item that everybody should have. Well, I'm back looking at this again, looking a little close. I realize it's already got that update installed on it that's supposedly supposed to protect the refrigerator if it overheats. And you see where that clamp has been installed. I think that's part of the part of the. I think that's part of the recall. Not 100 sure, but I believe it is. Um, it does say it's equipped with this thermal sensor, but you can see in this case, it did not do any good. I would, just would like to know how they determined the exact cause of this fire. You know, did it just did the heat uh, run away from from it? You know, did it was it an overheat situation? Uh, I don't see any yellow residue. I don't I don't know if it burns off or not. But I thought you know that if the tubing can actually get a hole in it. I guess there's two different ways it can fail. Either, you know, if, if you, if the tubing fails and blows out all the chemicals, that may be one way. Of course, the other way, if it just overheats and gets so hot to a point, it melts the wiring, and then all the wiring catches on fire. You can see the, the it looks like the bulk of it was up top. But I really don't know if it started from the top or not. You can see the fans, how they got cooked and melted. Very scary, very scary. It's got me thinking about or the propane powered RV refrigerator and uh, how safe it is and if, if maybe we should upgrade at some point in time to a residential fridge. Something to think about, something to think about. Well it's been a few days and still got no answer on the guys, uh, my, our neighbor's RV refrigerator that caught fire. So, but I've been doing a lot of research myself and trying to decide what I'm going to do to help protect our investment, our RV, and uh, everything we have in it. So, and I thought I would uh, share this with you. One really neat product here, here's the website. It's ARPRV.com. It's called Fridge Defend. And with this product, well, first of all, look at this homepage. It's a scary picture. You know, if you have a pet, you see the picture of that RV on fire. What a scary thought that would be. But these uh, four-door Norcolds, like, well, this, it seems like they're very common. That's, that's the problem child, it seems like, out of all of them. The, um, but even the two doors are not, you know, immune from it, because I got a two-door Norcold right there, and that thing's uh, going on 18 years old. So I'm going to make a decision. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But if you have a four-door Norcold, I would uh, seriously look at getting some sort of a, uh, protection device on there to help uh, prevent something like this from happening. Um, let me show you some more uh, 
pictures here that I've come across. Of course, I'm, I'm still here at the same website, but um, you can just scroll down and it kind of documents. And there's a lot of data to digest on this website. And you'll see a lot of scary pictures and they, they, they should scare you. Because RV after RV has been on fire from these refrigerators. And, you know, could be uh, Dometic, could be Norco, either one. But if it's a uh, absorption type refrigerator, you know, not the residential type, there's always a chance that this could happen. But there are ways we can do to uh, help prevent it from happening. Uh, picture after picture. And you can see like where they start right next to where the refrigerator is or was. A lot, a lot of documented cases. But now let me show you this other one. There's a really good video they have. And I'll, I'll put a link to it also. Okay, so Fridge, Fridge Defend also has their own YouTube channel. Right there it is. And I'll put a link to it. But this is a really good video. It's 17 minutes in length. I'll put a link to it. I suggest you to watch this. That'll give you kind of all the information you need. You know how for years we've always heard you don't run your refrigerator off level. It's not good for it. But you don't really hear, well, what, what's so bad? What, well, the danger is running, running them off level, it can destroy the, there's a chemical in there that it's designed to help protect the piping, to protect from corrosion. And if you run these off level, it can mess up that chemical. It can crystallize and start clogging up. And then your refrigerator can overheat. On, on top of that, it creates pitting. Without that protection inside the pipes, pitting can begin the form on the inside. And you can't see it until one day the temperatures increase, pressures increase, and one of those pits decides to blow out and in this video it describes that and shows that and it's the ammonia that actually catches fire so that's uh I'm off, I'll, I'll fast forward this video to a particular section hang on so we've all seen the back of our refrigerators you got this canister it's either on the left or the right and we got that little heating element and i think they get up to over 300 350 degrees if i remember right in, in testing right in the past they get really hot and it and it boils, I guess this is called the boiler tube, and uh, this is the area where it can crack and cause the ammonia to spray out, and this is the weak point, and they, they, they blow this up for you, and they talk about this little blue area, that this is the protection that, that uh, there's a chemical in there, I forget the name of it, but it protects that pipe from corrosion, and this is the actual blown up section you can see the corrosion on this pipe here and it uh, it, it does a really good uh, description of, of what happens when they overheat okay so here's the critical point uh, is crystals form when you when you run these off level these crystals form and it and it stops the flow and then they begin to overheat and then that's when you lose your protection you get a little pit and this can swell up the the piping can distort and then it shows you here, it'll do a it'll zoom in. And this is when we get, get the fires. Um, and you have a little corrosion, you get a pit in there. That's the weakest point. And so this could happen day or night, when you're asleep, whenever. So there's a, an example of some corrosion. Now with that device installed, if it reaches 400 degrees, it'll shut itself down. But if you don't have that, and see, look, look at here, this is important. See, see that little bitty pinhole right there? That's an actual pinhole of a, a pipe where they've, I guess, cut it in half and dissected it to show the failure. So at that point, that's when the ammonia sprayed out and caused the fire. Of course, there's other ways these RV fridges can catch on fire just by routing of wires. The wires aren't routed correctly or they rub on a pipe long enough, they actually can rub a hole in one. So there's other things, but I'm assuming this is the more common failure. Just because you got to think about how many times we drive these RVs in an unlevel 
because they say just a few degrees. So if you travel with your refrigerator on like I do and you go out west, you climb up and down those mountains, you're off level a lot of the time anytime you're climbing a, a steep grade. So it's got me to thinking about, okay, that refrigerator out there that's 18 years old, how many times have I run it off level and have I already compromised it? Uh, have I, do I have pits already forming inside my piping and I don't know about it? How are you going to know? So I see this product is great where if we, if it, we clog up, we start to have a, a runaway heat situation, it gets to 400 degrees, it shuts it down. But is that enough? If you've got an old refrigerator, the way I was thinking about it in the back of my mind, if I had a 1200 series refrigerator, because that's the more problem child, it seemed like, uh, the way I would feel the safest, of course, get one of these devices here that's going to shut it off at 400 degrees, but also maybe install a new cooling unit on the back. So that way you start out fresh. If you start out with a new cooling unit along with one of these new devices, you know that that cooling unit was never subjected to over 400 degrees. If it was never subjected to over 400 degrees, then the uh, protection has never been compromised. So that would make me feel relatively safe if I was traveling around with a 1200 uh, series refrigerator or any older absorption refrigerator. It's just that's kind of what I was thinking about. Oh, and here's a picture of a crack. See at the very bottom of the weld uh, where the um, next to the boiler pipe and that's where the the ammonia escaped from was that little bitty crack. Now let's talk to the uh, fella at who manufactures this or somebody who made the, at the website I called and uh, they was just describing that these cooling units when they leave the factory they have about 350 psi in them and when I say the cooling units it's all these piping all that piping when it leaves the factory it has 350 P psi in it and one way they determine I guess if if it had a leak and it leaked out is I guess they get it in the lab and they pierce the tubing and measure the pressure that's still inside. If it's still got 350 PSI, well, they know none of it leaked out. But sometimes, you know, if, you, if it's got zero or leaked down to 150, they know a, a crack has opened up and it spewed out the ammonia and most likely caused the fire that way. And here's a picture where a wire had dropped down and touched a pipe and shorted out and burned a hole through it and caused a fire. So there's different ways that this can happen. So we've got to be thinking about this. So, so one way is the fridge defense, but there's, an, there's another option too that you could may use on top of the fridge defense. Let me show you that. So here's another unique pr product. The, there's different brand names of this stuff. It's called Fire Slayer. It's like a plastic tube that's pressurized and has fire extinguishing material in it. So you can put that up uh, in, in any kind of cabinet or on the back side of your refrigerator if there is a fire and once it burns through that plastic, which I imagine it would relatively quick, it will spew out the, the fire extinguishing material quickly putting out the fire. And I'll show you a video on that, how that works. You can see here what it would look like once the fire came, it, it would open up and, and blow out the uh, fire extinguishing material. And here's another option. Uh, it's, this is called a SS30 Halon Extinguisher. You can see how this fella has done. He's mounted it in, in the back of his uh, RV uh, on, uh, under the refrigerator, of course. And so if there's a fire, it will automatically kick on and hopefully put the fire out. I thought that was interesting. Here's another picture. There's the, there's the part number, SS30 Halon Fire Extinguisher. So it self-activates. Here's an interesting video where they've simulated a fire in, in the back of an RV. Here's the RV refrigerator and watch what happens. Put it right out. So that's another thing to think about. Here's another company that makes the same pro called ProTinge. And they also have, what was the other company, Blaze Cut. A couple of companies that, uh, that make that. This is an article I came across in Forbes magazine talking about uh, exploding RV refrigerators and all the lawsuits that's been placed over the years. Uh, pretty interesting read. You can just Google that right there and come across it. 
Okay, recap on these different ones. You got you got Blaze Cut. That's one manufacturer. Who else did we have? Um, we had Fire Slayer. That's someone else. And then we had Protange. That's three different companies I came across that make those plastic tubes. Um, I talked to the gentleman at uh, at the Fridge Defend. Uh, asked him about these, and he commented on them. He was, I think, he questioned them if they was actually rated to put out ammonia type fires and never got a exactly straight answer something further that probably needs to be researched but based on that video it did work you know i think these run about 200 bucks another little uh hedge of protection that you could add to the back of your refrigerator that would probably be a, a good investment okay so i know i've shown you enough stuff to keep you awake tonight uh and and it should so uh, I'm trying to decide what to do with, with our situation. Of course, with us, we've got the two-door, and it's already uh, knocking on 18 years of age. And of course, I believe in being proactive, not reactive. So I'm leaning toward pulling this out and putting it in a residential fridge. I've done some research on that, and I came across this great-looking fridge, this one here, which is 9.8 cubic feet. Uh, I believe that fridge there is about 8 cubic feet. So I'll have uh, almost two more cubic feet of storage. And uh, in doing my research, you can get, see you can get this fridge for $449. Um, it's item number because the item number is not shown there. there. There's Actually, that's the model number. You can get it in at the, like the last two uh, letters there, the SW, the SB. That's uh, for either white or black cabinet. But in my research, when you search these reviews, see it here, it's got like 2,300 reviews. And I when I went under the reviews and did a search, I put in the term RV, and 143 people had bought this purposely for RV usage, and they really praise it. One nice thing about it is, in fact, I, I ran down to Lowe's to look at one and take measurements and check it out. The um, It only draws, while the compressor is running, it only pulls 75 watts. Um, and when it's in defrost mode, it only pulls 145, because that's usually not going to be on very long, just enough to take the frost off the coils. So I think when I get home, I'm going to do some research, might pick up one of those fridges, and you may see a future video of installing, installing this fridge in this, this RV. And of course, for us, uh, we're, we're blessed because I've already got three solar panels and I've already got three Battleborn batteries that gives us 300 amp hours. So in that aspect, I'm already set up pretty good shape. I've got a thousand watt inverter. I think will be enough. I might be pushing it, running the TV. So I may have to upgrade upgrade my inverter to 2,000 watt possibly. But this might be something for you to consider if you are the type of RVer where you're always plugged up most of the time. You don't boondock that much. You might want to consider going with a residential fridge. I mean, look at this price for four forty nine dollars. That will this fridge will fit right in that hole with no modification. And even if you had a 1200 series, it's going to be a little bit, because the 1200 series, I'm assuming, is around 12 cubic feet of storage. This is going to give you 9.8. So it's you're going to lose a little bit of storage, but not that much. Uh, but it's going to uh, maybe give you a lot better peace of mind while you sleep at night. Well, I guess I'm going to wrap this video up. Like I said, I'll put a link to this this video. I want you to watch this uh, ARP video in the description below. And I'll put a link to the website. Uh, look over that. Do some reading. Do some watching. Come up with your own decision on what would be best to protect uh, your RV, uh, your, your family, and of course your pets if you've got pets in your RV. And once again, thanks for watching and have a blessed day. See you. Bye. I thought I'd add this little part, because um, you may be wondering, I know I would be if I watched this video, I'd be seeing this plastic crap wrapped around this laptop, and I'm thinking, why has he got that on there for? What's it about? Well, I made this little homemade thing because I wanted a dual screen laptop, and they're, they were, they're kind of expensive, so I wanted a cheap way out, so I made it out of, uh, this is J-Channel from Vinyl Siding, and you can kind of get an idea of how it's made on the back side. And uh, so anyway, it looks homemade. Because it is homemade. Thanks for watching.